In this module, I'll briefly introduce the concept of waiting functions and show a couple of examples. Waiting functions are useful for showing from where radiation in a column that reaches a satellite is emitted. In this class, we will see waiting functions for passive sensing applications in the infrared and microwave parts of the EM spectrum. Recall the definition of direct transmittance. It is the exponential of the negative vertical path optical depth of the atmosphere above a point normalized by the excedence angle to correct for the path length. If we integrate direct transmittance with respect to pressure, we get an expression that what? <laughs> Recall the, definition. Recall the definition of direct transmittance. It is the exponential of the negative vertical path optical depth of the atmosphere above a point normalized by the excedence angle to correct for the path length. If we take the derivative of direct transmittance with respect to pressure, we get an expression that contains an additional coefficient of 1 over mu and the vertical derivative of optical depth. If we take the below expression for Schwarzschild's equation and do a little bit of algebra, we can replace the exponential in the second term with the weighting function w, which is d tau dp. And the weighting function tells us the relative contributions of emissions for various pressure levels to the top of atmosphere radiance. So let's take a look at a few examples next. Suppose an atmosphere has an optical depth profile that looks like the plot in the middle. This is pretty typical in wavelengths that are susceptible to absorption by water vapor, whose concentration roughly decays exponentially with height to first order. The direct transmittance of the atmosphere for the given optical depth is shown at left and decays to zero near the surface, in this example. The weighting function is shown at far right and is the vertical derivative in pressure coordinates of the direct transmittance. Thus, it will peak in magnitude where the direct transparency changes the most. This happens at around 2 kilometers altitude in this example. The weighting function tells us that radiation that would reach the satellite comes from mostly between the surface and 5 kilometers, although a little bit of radiation comes from higher altitudes since the direct transmittance does not go quickly to 1 at high altitude. In the second example, we stretch out the vertical profile of optical depth. It begins to increase, going from top down at around 10 kilometers, and a little below 10 kilometers is where the direct transmittance begins to decay quickly. Therefore, the weighting function peaks around 8 kilometers. However, it is non-zero throughout the depth of the troposphere, and even a little bit beyond in this example. Most of the radiation reaching space, however, comes from roughly between 5 and 11 kilometers. One last example shows a weighting function with an upper tropospheric maximum. This might represent a wavelength that is sensitive to something present high in the atmosphere, such as molecular oxygen or ozone. In this case, very little of the top of atmosphere radiance is influenced by emissions from the lower troposphere because any emissions are absorbed and re-emitted higher in the atmosphere at some point. For bands that are sensitive to molecules that vary in concentration horizontally, like water vapor, the weighting function will vary substantially as well with space. Suppose you are observing the same scene from a satellite at two different times. One time is moister than the other and has a mixing ratio profile that looks something like the green line. Later, the atmosphere is much drier and the mixing ratio profile more closely resembles the red line. In a water vapor absorption band, the volume absorption coefficient would vary with the mixing ratio, so the optical depth profile has a similar shape to the mixing ratio profile. We can then analytically compute the direct transmittance and the weighting function. Both tell you that top of atmosphere emissions generally come from lower altitudes in the dry atmosphere than in the moist one, although some overlap exists between the two weighting functions. Because the transmissivity of the moist atmosphere goes to zero above the ground, the weighting function in the moist atmosphere is zero below that point. 
Finally, the bottom left plot shows how direct transmittance might vary as a function of wavelength in a band centered around the black line that is located somewhere in a water vapor absorption band. Direct transmittance in the moisture environment will be small, perhaps zero, over a wider band surrounding the central wavelength than the dry environment, in which the direct transmittance might not even reach completely zero at the surface. Weighting functions also differ between wavelength bands. Recall the SRFs for the GOES long wave bands, shown at bottom right now. Channels 8 through 10 are within a water vapor absorption band, but band 8 experiences more absorption than band 10. Therefore, in the same environment, the weighting function for band 10 will tend to have a peak at a lower altitude than band 8, consistent with the notion that the typical brightness temperature for band 10 is a little higher. We will wrap up by taking a look at two different sets of weighting functions. The first is at Shelby, Alabama. A sounding launch indicated almost 50 millimeters of total precipitable water, which is indicative of a moist mid-latitude environment. The temperature and dew point from the sounding are respectively shown as solid and dashed lines in this panel here, and the two are near each other, especially in the upper troposphere. The green, blue, and purple lines denote the weighting functions for GOES bands 8, 9, and 10 at this location. Band 8 has a maximum near 200 millibars, while band 10 has a maximum closer to 400 millibars. However, band 10 detects some radiation from as low as 700 millibars. Band 8 detects no radiation below 400 millibars. The weighting function for band 9 sits between the two. This figure shows the weighting function at Las Vegas, Nevada at the same time. Las Vegas is in a desert, and this sounding was taken in July, so the total precipitable water was a fairly dry 13 millimeters. When compared to the weighting functions in the moisture Alabama environment, these three weighting functions, still representing bands 8 through 10, are much closer together. They all have peaks between about 450 and 550 millibars. However, band 10 still sees radiation from further down in the troposphere than bands 8 or 9. Therefore, we should expect that the band 10 brightness temperature will be the warmest of the three at this location. The weighting functions shown in this and the previous slide are based on temperature and humidity observations from weather balloons. They give us a convenient way of quickly interpreting the radiances viewed by satellites. We'll occasionally return to the topic of weighting functions as we continue to discuss passive remote sensing.